Hello. What I'm going to try to do in this screencast is create a kind of Polaroid effect, pinning a Polaroid photo uh, to a wall. I saw the effect um, a little while back somewhere on the net, and I thought it looked pretty neat, so I thought I'd try to do it in Inkscape. So what I'll do is, first of all, drag in uh, a suitable photo, or import it through the menus. And now that I have the photo here, what I'm going to do first is create a rectangle You'll see I have rounded corners preset here from something else I was working on. So what I'll do is hold control and drag those corners out. Select that rectangle. It helps to have it kind of semi-transparent so you can see. Now this kind of looks like a, a Polaroid. Um, what I will do is actually change the fill color of that shape to full opacity but just kind of a um, slight gray color. Okay, don't want it too dark. Something that just sets it off from a white background. Say something like this. Again, I will make sure it's selected. Hit page down. There I have my kind of Polaroid. Now, where the effect comes in is uh, in the shadow of this Polaroid. So what I can do very easily is select that background rectangle that we created, hit Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to turn it black, solid black. And now what I'm going to do is actually change that object into a path so that when I double click it I can get nodes. All right. Now what I'm going to do is select in between these two nodes, so I select that member, and I'm going to choose to add a node. I will select the node that I just added, and I'll make sure that it's actually symmetric. So there's a button here that says Make Selected Node Symmetric. I'm going to do that. And now what I'm going to do is actually hold the control key and drag that up just slightly. Okay. Now what I'll do is select those three nodes and drag them down. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. What you have to do is probably turn that opacity down so you can see what's going on underneath. Probably even lighter than your original rectangle background. Zoom in and I want to drag it so that that middle one just intersects here with that original rectangle. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe if I change the color a little bit, you can see that my original rectangle is here and I've created this kind of curve. I've dragged it longer. Now what I'm going to do is hit F1 to select it. I'm going to make it black. Using the fill and stroke dialog, I'm going to create a black color. I'm going to make it fully opaque and I'm going to blur it probably by a value of 2 is fine. And now I make sure it's selected and I'm going to send it right to the back. And then you can see I've kind of created a very simple effect where the photo looks kind of now as if it's a little bit curled and sitting up. Uh, you can play with it a little bit. Sometimes it's best to take the original photo and that original frame or photo paper and drag it up slightly so the lights kind of coming from the top casting shadows down below and you get that kind of effect now what I'm gonna do is create a thumbtack to put in here so what I'll do is just do a very quick thumbtack I'll just take the circle tool I will create a circle the size of a thumbtack. I'll change it to some kind of, uh, you know, say red. Now what I've done in the past is kind of create a semi-realistic uh, thumbtack by doing the following. I'll take that circle, I'll duplicate it, create another one, and I'll make that one a different color, darker say, and I'll duplicate that again 
create another circle. Again, I'll change the color so you can see it. And what I'm going to do is then make that last circle just a hair larger. So now I see how I move them here to overlap them. So I'm going to select both of those circles and choose path difference and I'm left with this little sliver. Okay, I'm going to use that as my kind of highlights for this circle. What I'm going to do is actually select it, make it kind of light in color, maybe even white, drag it back over. It's probably best actually the light's coming from the top so we'll kind of rotate this so it's highlighting the top. You may have to adjust the size of it a little bit, something like that. Then I'll duplicate it and I will take the duplicated one, holding control, I'll rotate it upside down and I'll bring it to the bottom. I'll make that bottom one black. Now I'll take each one holding shift to select both kind of crescents and I'll reduce the opacity just to give that lessen that effect and then one last thing I'll take that main red circle duplicate it once more I'll make it black just stretch it long like this and I'll change the blur value to something a little more blurry. You can even change the opacity of it a little bit if you want. And now when that's selected I'll send it to the back again and I've kind of got a, a semi-realistic thumbtack. I'll take that and I'll use it to you know, maybe pin my photo here. So there you've kind of, kind of got a Polaroid type effect that you might want to use on a website. Okay, thank you.